it worked. I shut my phone off and my remote worked. I can't believe it. Every video I start, it either worked or it didn't. Okay, I'm back from my walk and the reason I'm standing is not because I think I'm skinny or thin. I am still o classified as obese, no, overweight. And I'm like, it should be, I think 0.49 on 0.50. So I've got about, you know, 10, 15 pounds before I hit that. Well, I wanted to show you where I come from. Okay, that's why I'm standing up because this was me in 2014 at my mom's 80th birthday. She'll be 89 in July. Um, I'm over 200 pounds there. I don't normally weigh myself much. I've got a lot of photos on here, but I don't have the time to go through them. And Oh, here's the one here. This is 2015. So a year later. And then the one right here is September 2022. So um, I don't weigh myself because it's too depressing for one. And for two, I don't think it tells the whole story. Um, I retain a lot of water. Like everybody's like, oh, electrolytes. You got to take electrolytes. No. Look at me. I am so water retentive today. I take a water pill and I still look like this. So I had too much salt yesterday. I cannot have salt. I mean, everybody's like, oh, you got to have, you know, LMNT, which I love that stuff. I can't have it. <sighs> but if you can... Do your salt. I have nothing against that. But let's pick up where we left off. And that was I had gained weight in 2017 and 18. Looked at myself on the couch. And I didn't know who that person was. My previous video. I kind of lost it. It was very emotional for me to go through that. Because I didn't realize. I, you don't realize it just sneaks up on you. Well, in 2022, my husband and I in January went to Quartzsite to see his parents. We ate everything coming and going. I think we were gone like two weeks or something. Anyway, and then we come back three weeks, weeks later, it's Las Vegas NASCAR race. Once again, I ate everything. Well, on the way home, my husband, who is 62 now, but 61 and has always been thin, his whole family, they're thin people. His mom is little, his dad is tall and slender, his sisters are skinny. Um, they don't eat normal. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say about that. But they're all tall, thin people. Well, he looks down at his bulging belly and says, I got to go on a diet when we get home, but I'm not doing keto. And I'm over in the passenger side going, <clears throat> keto. So we came home. It's early March. We started keto. I said, you've got to eat what I give you and you need to stop the snacking. So we started keto. And I had watched Dr. Barry go from keto to carnivore. I watched, I wasn't paying attention. Isn't it interesting what we're seeing in front of us, but not catching our brain? Like we miss it. What was I missing? I don't know. It just, it meant nothing to me. All of a sudden, at the end of March, 1st of April, I'm like, I'm going to try carnivore. I want to see if it will help the three issues I talked about before. So I started carnivore and then I had heard about beef, butter, bacon, and eggs from Wendy from Loving It on Keto, Wendy and Harry, and other people were doing it. So I just started eating beef, hamburgers, eggs, bacon, not much pork. We don't eat pork. Uh, it really bothers my husband's lower GI. He gets severe pains. He can have bacon, ham, 
bacon and ham, but the rest tears him up. So we don't eat it much. And then you could become chicken aversion. <laughs> like I tried to eat chicken after I started carnivore and I was like, I, I can't do chicken. What is wrong? And then you join the groups, right? And then they're like, oh, I can't eat chicken or, oh, I can't eat pork or, oh, I can't eat beef. You know, we all go through this. Um, I can eat a little bit of chicken once in a while, but it just, that's not what I want. My body wants beef and eggs. And I've said before, I get duck eggs. So back to starting the carnivore. Well, two days later, I'm actually going normal. My daughter says, what's normal? Not running to the bathroom. She says, LOL. I'm sorry, that's not funny to me. That's hallelujah. I'm not running and hoping I make it. I could be in a restaurant. I could be in a store. It doesn't matter where I am. If it's before noon, I gotta know where the bathroom is. This is too much information and I'm sorry, but I went on carnivore to stop diarrhea. Everybody's like, oh, how do I stop the diarrhea on carnivore? That's why I went on it. Through Steak and Butter Gal, I found out pepper and spices bother me and I already knew the spices, but it finally made it in my brain and melted fats. Because I have no gallbladder, like I said, uh, I can't process that very good. So I didn't realize that that was contributing to my problem. And then my asthma cleared up. I stopped eating the cheese, which triggers my asthma. And then I wasn't using my inhaler all night long. And then my hip pain started getting better and I just started feeling better. My weight loss is very slow. I'm 64, I will be 65 in August and it's very slow. The scale does not move, but I was dropping sizes. Like I'm at a 16, I'm heading to an 18, like that picture. Next thing I know, those pants are too big. I get in a 14. The next thing I know, they're not too big, but I'm going, I think I can wear a 12. Get into the 12s and then, um, all of a sudden, I'm like, you know, one day I go, I think I want to try the 10s. I had tried them, and it's like, nope, can't. Well, I can button them, but I don't breathe. I don't even use my brain. I just stand there in a coma. <laughs> I can button them, but they're very tight. Now, I have a lot of right here, like I said before, and here to get rid of, but that's a huge accomplishment. It's not a scale victory, but it's a pant size victory. <laughs> and so I just got better and better. And then we go camping and boating all summer long. This is gonna be a challenge for me because I'm like, I don't know how to go boating and camping without potato chips and hamburgers and hot dog buns and you know all the, the beans and the potato salad and stuff like that. Um, I know what to do, but I was learning new recipes like the cottage cheese chips. Oh my gosh. Everybody that I make these for absolutely love them. Keto Twins made them, but they got them from somewhere else. It gets that crunchy, because I like crunchy. I'm not a sweets person. So I started learning how to do those. And the egg white bread I learned how to make last year, and I perfected the recipe. And even my husband likes them. And then the keto chow, I started getting the subscription and I'm just losing, I guess you don't realize where the fat is in your body, but I was measuring and it's like, I'm not really losing anything off my thighs and my calves. Well, a little bit, like maybe I lost 11 inches last year and from everywhere but you don't it's not on the scale and you can't see it it's not measuring where's it coming from because my body composition like i said has changed so much healing body composition i started exercising in november and i have never been an exercise person pe in high school for me was awful i was a sick kid i had asthma bronchitis, I got rheumatic fever, 
which caused a massive pain in my knees. And I had um, doctor's notes to not do PE. Well, I had a PE teacher said, doctor's note, forget you, go run, go play baseball, go do this, go do that. Oh, my mom went down to the school. She was so mad. Very painful. All, even into my 20s, I had such joint pain in my knees. But I got over that. But I was always sick. I always had the flu. I always got strep throat. I had bronchitis. I was a sick child. At 11 years old, maybe 12, right before 12, I had my appendix out. They burst. I was full of poison. I could have died. I was in the hospital for five days and back then they give you shots in your hip. I had bruised hips, both sides from the antibiotics and other all that junk that they gave me. They did this side, then they would do that side. Then they would roll me over and do, it was terrible. And then, like I said, the gallbladder at 30, Oh, I was wrong in the previous video. I was in my 40s in 2003. So um, then my gallbladder surgery, and then I had a ganglion cyst on this wrist in 95 taken off. And then fast forward, 2003, I started Atkins, I said. Broke my leg March 6th in two spots in my ankle. I was in a cast for six weeks, but I didn't walk. They wouldn't let me put weight on my foot, and I started therapy with, with crutches and a walking boot. I never walked in. I never walked in the walking boot. So for four months, I did not walk. On July 4th of that year, I got the boot off and a brace on and started to learn how to walk without I mean it was terrible the therapy was awful because I couldn't move you know if you don't move it you'd lose it so I had to learn how to walk I didn't know how to walk I couldn't bend my ankle and so I had started Atkins I didn't quit I kept going I'd come home from work now mind you I was a school cook wow yeah a year round and that's in the days when we had Real butter still, we were making homemade foods and they were wonderful. So I started Atkins and every day I would come home, my coworker brought me home. I had sugar-free Jello in the fridge and I would whip up some heavy whipping cream and I would sit on the couch and eat my sugar-free Jello and whipping cream. And I did that every single day. And I lost 25 pounds in two and a half months. So that was cool. Well, then 20, 2007, I was camping at the lake at just after the 4th of July, and I had woke up that Friday, and my thigh was hurting, and I was like, gosh, my thigh hurts. Well, I was working the summer program where we feed kids all summer, most of the summer, three quarters of the summer, and it just felt like a pulled muscle, and I had picked raspberries. I thought, did a spider bite me? Did I pull a muscle? I didn't know. Anyway, we go, we go camping. Saturday, we go out on the beach, and I'm getting worse and worse and worse, and I'm nauseated. And my son, oh, Mom, you just need a beer. Here, drink a beer. And I took a drink. Nope, that ain't it. And then somebody said, water, here. So I drank some water. Here it comes. I stood up. That was a real burp from my coffee earlier. I stood up and I went over on the other side of our friend's boat and I launched liquid. It was all that water that I had been drinking. And I went back and I was like, I need to go back. Somebody please take me back. And so my son took me back to the campsite and I laid with my leg up. By now it's swollen. Like it's really fat in my ankle and foot and it's starting to turn red. And I'm boating and camping with two nurses. Yes, two nurses. So I go take a shower because I'm like, I just, I just need to go take a shower. So I go take a shower and I was at our friend's campsite. They don't go out in the boat. So I was with them and 
then everybody comes back and and I could I I couldn't eat I I just literally could not eat so I didn't eat breakfast that morning, I probably ate Friday night, Sunday morning we wake up, and I am so bad and not. I would like to tell the story without crying, but I never can. But I'm going to try. I Back then, we were in a tent. We didn't have a camper yet, but we had a mattress. And so I get off the mattress and I crawl to the door. And we were in the site where it's right by the bathroom, so I wobble my way to the bathroom. I go in, I plop down, and my first thought, I'm so sorry, I, I can't do this without crying. My first thought is, I'm gonna stick my feet up because when I pass out, that way somebody will find me and know that I'm in here. That's how bad I felt. I thought I was going to die. And I wanted to. So I stick my feet out. I'm trying to breathe. I'm sure my heart was racing. I'm sure my blood pressure was off the charts. <sighs> I get done. I get up. Wow. I didn't die and I didn't faint. Cool. So I get back to the tent. And I wake my husband up and I'm like, we got to go home. Something is wrong. So he gets up. He looks at my leg, which is now purple. Like it's red purple. Uh, basically, my foot and my ankle is swollen, huge, red, purple. People are slowly getting up by this time and we start tearing everything down. Well, I can't do anything. I, I can't do anything. I just have to sit in a chair. One of our friends helped us, and my son was there, and helped us get tore down. And then nurses, no, there was, the nurses are not there. They have no clue. And um, one of our other friends that was there was cooking breakfast, and everybody eventually is starting to eat, and I can't eat. I'm just like, I can't eat. And so we load everything up. And my friend Jen helps me to the car. Like, my husband's on this side. Jen's on this side. Nobody else. Nobody. There was nobody else helping. And I get in the car. We drive the hour and a half, two hours home. We dropped off the jet ski and went right up to the hospital. And I got in like that. Like that. They took one look at my foot and ankle and went... You're in. So they put me in a bed. They tried to start an IV and they couldn't get an IV going because I was so dehydrated. And so she finally gets a baby needle in. They bring in the ultrasound. They do a chest x-ray right there, right in the ER room. And so then the gorgeous, this gorgeous doctor comes in. I'm like, of course, you know. You're all, and this gorgeous doctor comes in and he says, you have a blood clot and we're going to get you a room. I want you to sit still and just, you know, we're going to get you a room. So I sat there and I was like, by now, it's like five o'clock at night. I'm starving. I haven't eaten since Friday and I'm so hungry. And so I said, I'm really hungry. Is it possible to get something to eat? And he said, yes, I am going to order you some food. And what they brought me was like Thanksgiving dinner. It's July. It's just after the 4th of July. I had stuffing, mashed potatoes, turkey, and some kind of maybe green beans or peas or something. And I ate because I was so hungry. I didn't care. So they finally get me up to a room and they've got me my leg elevated and they have a little porta potty and they had to weigh me on the bed because they did not want me to move. 
Now, I don't know what a blood clot is at this point. I have no idea. So I'm laying there, long story short, five days, I was so sick. They were shooting me up with heparin and all this other stuff. It made me so sick, I couldn't eat. And um, I had visitors and I just would lay there. I was so sick from all of the drugs. And then they were trying to get my INR up because I was 0 0.80, which if you are in that situation, that is very bad. If you're a normal person, you're like one, you know, you're one. A normal person without the <clears throat> protein thing that's missing or whatever, you know, it was genetics, a trip, and um, I was on birth control for hormones. Those three things, the trifecta. I'm going to pause this for a second because I haven't plugged in my phone. I apologize. But this might not even work. We'll see. Yay, it worked again. So I finally get to come home. And I had a hospital doctor there from the place where my GP was. But they told me he was not going to be my doctor, that my GP was going to take over. And I was mad. Dr. Tufail, he was awesome. I think he's an Indian doctor. Anyway, he came in during the week and my daughter was supposed to go back up to college, but she stayed because, you know, <laughs> mom's in the hospital. Well, she's at the foot of the bed. My husband's beside me and Dr. Tufail comes in and he says, you know, blah, 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 blah whatever he said, but this is the part I remember. He goes, a blood clot could break off and go psh. And I said, what does psh mean? He goes, it could go in your heart and you have a heart attack. It could go in your lungs and you have pulmonary embolism or it could go to your brain and cause a stroke or aneurysm and you could die. I sat up and I said, you guys can go now. Because I didn't want them to hear that. I didn't want my family to hear that. It was bad enough that I had to hear that. We always want to protect our loved ones from what's going on inside. I mean, we don't want them to hear that. And they both were like, nope, we're not going anywhere. And I was like, yeah, you guys need to go now. And they're like, nope. It was hard. It was very hard on my family. Well, I finally get home and <laughs> my leg is huge. Like it is huge. I measured and I was like an inch and a half bigger on this side than this side. And I know you probably can't notice it, but I do because my doctor told me it would never go away. He said, you'll always be swollen on that side. So I started warfarin had to have my INR done every two weeks, then three weeks, then it was like a month. And then now it's like, I try to get my prescription. It's like, no, you need to see the doctor get your INR, which I didn't know what that was, right? So I start looking stuff up. What's a blood clot? What's all this stuff? And you find out things you don't want to find out. Long story short, my family kept saying, you need to get a second opinion. And I'm like, why? because there's probably something they can do. And I, I'm i looking up stuff, you know, this whole time and I'm like, yeah, you can have a, a kind of like a mesh put in to catch the blood clots. And you can have this surgery and whatnot, whatever. And I'm like, all right. So I get referred to a vascular surgeon and he says, okay, Cindy, we're gonna do a CAT scan and we're going to see if you have even a pinhole. If you have a pinhole of blood supply, I will get you some blood going in that vein. I'm like, all right. Do the CAT scan, you go back a week later. Nothing. 
I'm sorry to tell you, but you have no blood flow and I can't do anything for you. Cindy, if there was something that I could do, I would do it. I'm going to tell your doctor, <clears throat> you need to be on blood thinner for life. Now, the reason that I'm emotional is because that killed me. That was my hope. It was my only hope. So I go out to the car and I call my mom because she's waiting to hear. The whole family's waiting to hear. What, what did I find out? And it's like I have no blood flow. The only blood flow I have, he said, is in the surface veins where you get varicose veins. And he said, if you ever get varicose veins, do not have them removed or stripped. That is your only blood supply. So, of course, I go home and I start looking this up. It's called Occlusive DVT, Complete Blockage of the Deep Vein. And yes, there's a secondary, my doctor said, there's a secondary supply, but it's not a very good one. Because that's not its job. The job of the surface veins is to take the blood from the deep vein in your limbs and feed your muscle and tissues. You know, that's that's the job. Now, this one is doing all of that. You know, these veins, the little veins, the surface veins come up. Well, then what did I find out? Oh, you could get gangly, or you could get gangrene in those veins. <laughs> My doctor hates it when I look stuff up. And so it's like, oh, you could get gangrene. Oh, great. Compression sock stockings wore them. Well, I'm a school cook. Our kitchen's 90 degrees. We have a 58-year-old kitchen that, you know, has no air conditioning. And it's hotter than, you know what, in there. So I wore them for a while. I wore them for pretty faithfully like I was supposed to. Kept my leg elevated. Did everything I was supposed to. Well, I found out that green food affected my INR. Then I had an expert sitting next to me at a meeting. Oh, you just need to eat it all the time. That way your body gets used to it and it won't, you know, it won't send your INR to the tank. I'm like, no, that's not how it works for me. If I eat green beans and I eat a salad and I eat broccoli, which remember, I'm keto back then. And I go to the doctor on Tuesday morning and my INR is 1.4. My doctor wants to know, what am I, what did you do? What did you eat? Uh, green beans and a salad. Why? Well, it sounded good. I wanted it. Don't do that. For me, for me. That doesn't work. Oh, my nurse told my husband, oh, she just needs to eat green food all the time and she'll be fine. No. Green food, vitamin K, makes the warfarin not work. And if the warfarin doesn't work, my blood thickens up like molasses. The chance of getting a secondary blood clot when you've already had one like this one is 60%. Over 100,000 people die a year from blood clots, and it affects 600,000 to a million people every year. That may sound like, oh, you know, that's not very much. Uh, it is. Blood clots kill more people than AIDS. Listen to me. AIDS, breast cancer, yes, breast cancer, and car accidents every year. So this is where I'm at. Now I'm like finding all this information out and I'm joining the Stop the Clot and the whole bit groups and hearing stories. And I'm like, wow, these 20 year olds, 30 year olds are getting it very young. I was in my 40s. And so right before my 50th birthday. So I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, and I started getting depressed and I couldn't stop crying. So I was at a doctor visit and I said, I, I can't stop crying. I'm like so depressed. If I was in a grocery store standing in line, I thought I was going to die. I thought a blood clot was going to break off and I was going to die. If I was driving down the road, even though I knew there was no chance, 
but even before I knew that, which was months later, I I thought I'm driving down the road, a blood clot's gonna go to my brain, I'm gonna wreck, I'm gonna kill somebody. I mean, this all the time, every single day, everything I did. I still went to work. I I thought I was gonna drop dead all the time. <laughs> That's what looking up information does to your brain. Well, he said, okay, well, let's try an antidepressant. And my mom's over here. You know, you've got an ulcer. No, it's gallstones. Oh, it's just your hormones. And my doctor said, no, it's depression. So he gave me uh, one, I can't remember, it starts with the L. He goes, we're going to try this, and if it doesn't work, we're going to try another, and we're going to find one that works. Oh, my gosh. That medication worked so well for me. The weight of the world was lifted off my shoulders. My mood improved immensely. I felt so good. And another thing that helped me, um, I ran across The Purpose Driven Life by Rick Warren. That book saved me. We were traveling that next year, 2008, I think it was. Yeah, because 2000 oh, oh, surgeries that came after this. Anyway, I was reading it and I was like, oh my, to my husband, listen to this, listen to this, listen to this. That book saved my life from the first page i i felt so good to be alive i felt like god has a purpose for me and i may not know what it is right now but i'm gonna figure it out you betcha that book is excellent every time i see one in a thrift store i buy it i've given them away to people this book saved my life so we go on, well, some things female-wise started happening, and so I had what's called an ablation, where they go in and they burn your cervix so that you don't bleed, because I'm on blood thinner now, I'm bleeding, I'm sorry, TMI profusely. So I go see the gynecologist, and he's like, uh, you're a mess, we need to go in and do, long story short, I had five out of six areas of repair inside. They left, he left my ovaries because he said that I'm still having hormones, which my other doctor, my GP said, no, you don't, not at your age. Anyway, 2009 had that. Well, if you go on surgery and you're on blood thinner, it's a pain in the butt. You have to go off the warfarin and then you got to start taking shots. So I had two shots a day in my belly between my mom, I mean, my daughter and her friend, my nurse neighbor. I went over and asked her to, if she would, nope, no, I don't do that. Thank you. Yeah, I, the nurses in my life have not really been that helpful, and that's fine. So my daughter, she came over, and then her friend, Jessie, thank you, Jessie. She did some of my shots, too. I had my surgery, and then I think in a 2000. 10 or 11, I did a handstand in a 48 inch pool and tore the tendons and uh, tendon and muscle off my elbow. They put me through therapy, excruciating pain. They put me through cortisone shots, did not help at the end of nine months. Oh, you need surgery. We're gonna drill five holes in your bone and reattach your tendon and muscle. Why didn't you do that in the first place? Insurance. Insurance makes them do all this, you know. You have to do all these steps. Well, they could have saved a lot of money, like my husband said. They could have saved themselves a lot of money had they just done that in the first place because I was in therapy like two or three times a week. I had two cortisone shots. Well, then I got, an, let's see, I got another cyst, and then I got uh, Quervain's. I think it's called Dr. Quervain's. So that's where your tendons have a sheath. And that tendon was so swollen. So inside the sheath, it's going eh, 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 pain, pain, pain. It hurt so bad. So he went in. 
same doctor that did the cyst in my elbow went in, cut that sheath open lengthwise to release the pressure. So yeah, I mean, I had surgeries after all that. Every time you gotta go off warfarin and then you gotta restart. But anyway, with the blood clot, I came home and I started to say, well, I put on a pair of capris, cause remember it's July and it's like in the hundreds here in July. And so they're huge, like they're sticking way out to here. And I'm like, holy cow, I guess I lost weight. I lost 10 pounds in the hospital, <laughs> but then I slowly gained it back. And um, I didn't even think about diet or eating properly till 2014, I'm gaining weight. 2016, I start keto, I lose weight, doing great. 2017, my dad dies, not gonna repeat that. In 2018, I was looking forward to court dates, which I didn't know at this time, but saw my picture, started keto again, lost weight, it was very, very slow. So by Christmas, I was in a size 12. I had probably lost, I would have to say about 25, 30 pounds. And then I kept it up. And then 2020 came, I was doing fine. Didn't gain any weight, still eating keto. Then 2021 came, I don't know what happened, but I let things creep in. So by the winter of 2021 and the start of 22, I had gained so much weight. I was back up to a size 16. And then the story continues with what I had told you before about uh, starting carnivore. All of a sudden, Dr. Baker comes up, Dr. Chafee comes up, steak and butter gal, five minute body. You know them all. You know them all. And then I start coming across Carnivore Quest with Larry and Cassie. And then it's like James and Emily with Ready Set Keto. And um, even Keto Reset with Jesse was watching her videos. Um, she's If you start with Jesse from the very beginning and watch all her videos, which would be really hard to do because she did hers. She started the year after me. So in 2019 is when she started, but oh my gosh, her transformation has been amazing. And she too has gained weight and she's back on track. Um, all these videos, and then you meet the people, right? You join the Facebook groups and you just meet, you know, the people and you comment and they get to know you. And then all of a sudden they're like, oh, Cindy's here. Oh, we see that Cindy's watching, you know, and stuff like that, which is really cool. And uh, I just really love the community. Um, I just want to say that if you are not carnivore and you don't want to try it and you don't believe it, that's fine. Stay keto. If that works for you, I really love Dr. Westman. Uh, I love Dr. Boz. Um, you know them. You know them all. You know, I love Dr. Seafried. I love Dr. Lustig. I bought his book, Metabolical. The book is in the bedroom. I need to start reading again. But all these people will help you. You've got to get the processed foods and oils out of your body. It can take, if you stopped vegetable oils right now and seed oils, which that's what they are. They're not vegetables. My friend, they're not, veg it's not vegetable oil. No, it's seed oils. Highly processed. It takes a year. I just watched a video to get the damage out of your body. If you stop today. It's damaging to your cells, your mitochondria. I mean, it's 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 causing heart disease, diabetes. Yes, diabetes. It's not just sugar. It's these seed oils that everybody's cooking in. I quit even avocado. I rarely use avocado oil. Um, I use the fats. They say good fats. Their good version of good fats is not my version of good fats. Saturated fats are good fats. They're natural. They're it's in all of nature. Seed oils is not nature. If you have to deodorize it, pulverize it, bleach it, you know, 
you watch the videos and you go, uh, that came from that? No, thank you. So anyway, I got off track again, and that's what my brain does. My brain is faster than my mouth. But I'm just saying for me, carnivore healed me. It's the proper human diet. It's what our ancestors ate. I look up charts. This is what I do every day. I look up the charts. Oh, what happened at the turn of the century? And then you go to the 20s, the 30s, the 40s, and then the 80s, 70s and 80s. It really hit. And you go like this and you go, well, what, what is that? Oils. Seed oils. Because, you know, Crisco. And butter. They start making oils. Heart disease shoots up. Diabetes shoots up. Cancer and heart disease and cancer, number one and number two deaths. Diabetes, number three. I don't agree with that. Diabetes leads to cancer and heart disease. You look it up. Diabetes is directly related, not in 100% of everybody, but most everybody that gets heart disease. I study every day, YouTube, I'm on YouTube every single day. Ira Cummings, Cummins, um, he's called the Fat Emperor, and um, Dr. Bickman, uh, Sten, Dr. Sten, all these guys, I'm learning every single day. Now, Dr. Chafee says you don't need to take supplements, and he's right. If you eat the proper human diet, you don't. If you're on the sad diet, you do because you're lacking these nutrients. You're not getting it from your food. That's why you have to take supplements. Now, I take iodine, two drops in my MSM or my coffee, and then I take XL Omega. I got that from Duck Commander, watching Duck Commander one day. So my husband and I take XL Omega. And then I take uh, potassium, and that's what I wanted to get to next, and then I'm going to close out because this is getting too long. I got my blood work done in January because my friend who wants to be my health coach, but to me is overweight. I'm going to be kind because she's a sweetheart, lovely person wants to help people, but she's not helping herself. You look at her pictures and you go, well, you're a gym rat? You ride your bike? How can you look like that? And like I said, I'm gonna be nice because she's a sweet gal. But um, I got, she says, I wanna see your blood work. I wanna see your, your cholesterol numbers. So in January, I'm on my 11th month of carnivore I go have my blood work done. I go in, oh, triglycerides 90. Doctor writes off in the side, 2012, 172. HDL, 62.5, 2012, 35. LDL was 170, I don't care, we all know why. VLDL was 18 and it went, the scale went to 40. So my VLDL is very low. He was not concerned at all. It just super happy. My calcium was super high and I said, not bad for someone who doesn't take supplements or drink milk. He says, then where do you get your calcium? And I was like, I don't want to tell you or you'll be mad at me. If you don't eat garbage, you don't need supplements. And yes, there's calcium in meat. All right. My liver marker's perfect. My kidney marker's great. I was a little high in uric acid, but doctor said if you have no symptoms, your joints are fine, you don't have gout, don't worry about it. Um, my A1C was 5.7. I was a little disappointed, but maybe that was down. I don't know. I haven't had my blood work. You need to get your blood work done. I had to pay out of pocket. I don't have insurance. I have no choice but to take care of myself. So you have to have, um, you know, a set point. You have to have a base point. You know, you don't know what you are. How can you compare it to anything? Because you don't know what, well, mine was 10 years old. I'm not doing that again. I'm getting them done 
in July, that'll be six months from January to have them redone to see where I'm at. But everything was great. I was a low in potassium, so I started taking potassium. And so I take the potassium, the XL Omega, which is, um, you know, uh, a good oil. I think it's fish because you can kind of smell it. Fish oil. I don't eat fish. And then the MSN for joints because I have arthritis in my hip, which is doing much better. And then now I'm taking the GG and CoQ10. Um, Ivor Cummins did an interview with this guy and he explains it. You got to look it up. G, G and CoQ10. Very, very good. GG helps the CoQ10 work for your heart. But as we age, the GG goes down and down and down and down. So I've got my mom on that supplement too. It's 9.15. I got to go to her house. She has dementia. For three years, I've been helping take care of her in the morning. Um, she does very well. She stays in her own house. But I, I do all her cooking, all her cleaning, all her shopping. Make sure she takes her pills. It's a disc because she was getting into them. So it automatically goes off at 9 o'clock and 6 o'clock. Um, my brother fell, and that's a long story. He's no longer available to help with her. It's just me. Um, my mom's husband died in 2020, and his family is pretty much non-existent. My stepbrother, Terry, is allowing her to stay in that house because it's his now. And he pretty much checks on her when I need help, and his daughter too, but not normally during the week, I have to ask for help. And then I pay my friend, Emily. She's a CNA and I pay her when we're gone to go check on, on mom. The most important thing is she has breakfast, takes her pills and her little dog, Hannah, gets fed proper. And other than that, she's just tired all the time. She wants to sleep. She has heart doctor appointments. She has AFib, she's had it for years. She has three issues, a leaky, valve afib and then i can't remember what the other one is but anyway so that's what i gotta go do and i do that every single day and so that's my life it's very stressful um i try to take time for me which we don't as caregivers we don't do that you know so that's why i started exercising and um i love it um i do weights i've showed you before and i will have to do that later now because I did the walk and I wanted to do my video and get it out and tell my story. We all have a story and we think it's not important, but it is important. I think we need to share and I would love to hear your story. And if you have a story, please let me know what your channel is. And um, I would like to go to your channel and see what your story is. So we're all in this together. Health is number one. We spend trillions, it was billions 30, 40 years ago, billions in healthcare, sick care. Now it's trillions. And it's all because of processed foods and oils. And I know oils is a processed food and it should be inclusive, but people don't get it. They think that vegetable oils is good and that's what they should be doing. And, and that's not right. And so um, everybody needs to find their path carnivore may not work for you and your doctor's going to have a cow and so i think if you did don't even say keto they don't like keto and keto is a bad word keto is a state of metabolic health it's a met metabolic state you're either burning sugar or you're burning fat you can't do both at the same time if you have insulin you're not burning fat you burn fat in the absence of insulin and keeping that insulin as low as possible, pancreas. Look at everybody dying of pancreatic cancer because they're overloading their pancreas. The pancreas's job is digestion. And when called upon to go out and transport that glucose, we have four hormones that raise our, our glucose and one that gets rid of the glucose. What does that tell you? In the, in the famine, or not famine, but starvation, famine, and 
oh, we're only eating meat and it's winter and, you know, fall and, and spring and the berries aren't here yet and the sour apples aren't here yet. Your body makes its own glucose through the through gluconeogenesis in your liver. You got to take care of your organs. All right. That's what I'm going to say right now. You have to take care of your organs. Your skin is an organ. You know, your lungs, your heart. Quit smoking. Quit eating foods that are damaging to your kidney. I have friends on dialysis. What? In this day and age with all this information, your liver, your colon, your your intestines, your gut, they're all organs. You have to take care of your organs. That's the only way. And your mitochondria is an organ. Your mitochondria is the powerhouse of your body. And your brain, you've got to take care of your brain. You've got to get the sugar out and the oils. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.